So I was playing Wordle the other day and I almost lost. And you can see that initially I got several of the letters right, but then it took me a lot of guesses to actually get to the right solution, which got me wondering, is Wordle always solvable? Can I always get an answer in six guesses or less? And also what is the best starting word that is gonna give me the best possibility of getting a solution within six guesses? This seems like an interesting programming challenge. Plus it's gonna leverage some of the skills that we use for coding interviews. So I'm gonna put my coding skills to the test and see if I can come up with a solution. Now quickly, before we get into solving this, if you're one of the 10 people in the world who hasn't played Wordle before, here's how it works. Basically we have six guesses to guess the five letter word. So we'll put in a guess like this. And then when we enter our guess, we're given three pieces of feedback. Either a letter is yellow, which means that it is in the solution word, but in a different position in the word, or the letter is green, which means it is in that word and it is in the correct position, or the letter is gray, which means that it is not in that word at all. So now we've guessed this word, let's guess another word where there's an A in the same position, the L in a different position, and it doesn't include an R, an E, or an S. So for example, we might guess fault. Now we've made a lot of progress here because now we know that all three of those middle letters are correct. So the only letters that have to change are F and T. And so if we think about this a little bit, the other word that comes to mind that would fit with this is caulk. And then you can see they're all green in this case, so we know we got the correct answer. So my first question is, what is that optimal first starting word? The easiest way for us to figure this out is just going to be to try every combination of first guess and solution and see which leads to the best worst case scenario. Right, we basically want to minimize the worst possible case for every guess, and we want to find that starting guess that minimizes the worst case for any possible solution. So let's consider the example that we just looked at. Our starting word was layers, and the solution was call. With this combination, when we guessed layers, we got feedback that was based on call. Right, and so our feedback was that we do have an L, and I don't have yellow, so I'm gonna use red instead of yellow, but we do have an L, it's just not in the right location. We also have an A that is in the right location. R is not in our word at all, E is not in our word at all, and S is not in our word at all. So now we have our feedback, and we need to make our next guess. And one possibility is, of course, call because that is the solution, and so it has to be valid. But there are also other words that we could possibly guess. For example, we could guess fault. We could also guess palette. Both of these are possible words, and there are lots of other words that we could choose from as well, but it's not the entire dictionary. We've now limited it down because of this feedback that we got. Now with each of these words, we would repeat this process. So we would, with caulk, we would see, okay, well, this one is all gonna be green. But if we choose fault, then only these middle three are gonna be green and the others are both gonna be gray. If we choose pallid, we're gonna find that only the A is green and L is still in the word, but it's not in the right spot. And we would continue this process with these ones where we would find additional words, we would make additional guesses and repeat that process. And now we also have to consider this for all the other solutions that match this because fault could also be a solution here. And pallid could also be a solution here, both of which would have given us the same starting feedback. And so what we need to do is figure out, okay, well, which of these and all the possibilities for that second guess is gonna give us the shortest path overall. If we repeat this for every possible starting word and every possible solution, ultimately we're gonna just get this massive tree that is going to give us all the possible paths and we'll be able to find which starting word generates the shortest paths. So let's go over to the computer and we'll code this up. All right, so we got some code put together here. And basically what this is doing is it's saying for every combination of guesses that you've made so far and the feedback that you got on each of those guesses, what is the worst case number of guesses that it's gonna to take to actually solve the puzzle? So I'm not gonna get into super detail on this code, but if you wanna take a look at it, it's all up in GitHub and the link is below this video. But quickly what we're doing is we're first gonna say, what are all the possible next guesses that we can make? We have a limited set of words out of all possible words that we could choose. And then we're just gonna look at every combination of guess and solution. And so for each guess and each solution, we're gonna try 
computing that path. And then we're going to figure out of all those paths, which next word can we guess that's going to give us the shortest resulting path. For starters, let's just run this on one simple example. So I'm going to run this with rates and this feedback of 11331, which in this case, ones are equivalent to the green, two is equivalent to yellow, and three is equivalent to gray. So this is like saying we put in rates and we got green, green, gray, gray, green. So let's run this. Okay, so for just this one starting word, my code is still running. And honestly, I'm not that surprised because this solution is super inefficient. Right, essentially what we're doing is we're considering all permutations of all words. And in this case, our dictionary has about 13,000 words in it. That means that we have n factorial different combinations, right? We have 13,000 factorial different possibilities that we have to consider to compute this. So that's something like one followed by 24 zeros, right? It's never going to finish running our code here. And if this was a coding interview, this would be a complete fail, right? Our code is not going to run in a reasonable amount of time. And so there's no way that we would pass this interview. So let's go back to the drawing board and look at some other possibilities of ways that we can come up with a more efficient solution to this problem. I have two different ideas for heuristics that will help us to optimize our solution here. So in this solution, what we are going to do is we are going to try and pick the word that minimizes the number of all gray words that we get, right? If we get a word where we get all gray tiles, that is bad. And so we want to find the word that minimizes that in terms of its overlap with all the words in our dictionary. A good example of this might be adieu, because adieu is a great word where it has every vowel except for an O in it. So unless our word only has an O in it, this is guaranteed to not give us all gray tiles, and this is an example of a word that might be a great starting word. And my other idea is what I'm going to call even splitting. And this is really an idea that is similar to binary search. Because with binary search, when we were searching in an array, we split that array in half, then we split it again, then we split it again, then we split, split it again. And the beauty of that is that we're always having the problem space. In this example, with even splitting, we have more than two possibilities. We basically have every possible variation of feedback that we could get. We could get yellow, green, yellow, yellow, gray. We could get yellow, yellow, gray, gray, green. There are 243 different combinations because for each value, we have three different feedbacks. So we get three raised to the fifth power. Now, my hypothesis here is that if we pick the word that most evenly divides among these 243 different possibilities, that is the most reducing our problem space at each step of the way. So with these two heuristics in mind, let's go back over to the computer and code them up and see what kind of solutions we get. Figuring out the best dividing word for our max info strategy is pretty easy to code up. So if we run our code, we see that these are our two best options here. I don't know how to pronounce them, but they both have 555 words in our dictionary that they didn't overlap any characters with. Essentially what we're doing is we're just saying for each possible starting word, we're going to compare it to every other word. And we're going to count the number of words where there are no overlapping characters. So I wrote a little bit more code here, which repeats this process of finding the next max info guess to find our solution. Each time we guess a word and we get feedback, that narrows down the number of total words we could choose from. And then we try and find what is the next best guess that gives us the max feedback out of those possible choices. But when I run this, the results don't actually look super promising. If we just look at the average number of guesses, okay, that's great, right? The average number of guesses is less than six. But if we look at the max number of guesses it took for every word, all of these are way above the number that we need to get to. And we have lots of words that are potential losing words. So in our dictionary, which again has about 14,000 words in it, this is a large number of words that are failing because we're not getting to a solution in six words or less. So with these results, our max info heuristic just isn't going to cut it, right? We're probably failing one out of every 10 or one out of every seven words. And we want to be able to solve this puzzle consistently. So let's try our other heuristic where we're going to try that even splitting up. So for this approach, we're trying to find the starting word that most evenly divides all of the possible solutions across different feedbacks. To make this easier, I've enumerated all the possible different feedbacks that we can get. Again, there are three to the five or 243 different feedbacks. And then to compute this, we just compare each starting word to every other word and count the number of each type of feedback. When we run this and sort it by standard deviation, we can see that our best possible word is layers. That gives us the most even divided. Then we also have rails, tears, sore, etc. Now, just like before, let's test this and see which of these actually in practice turns out to be the best starting word. Because these are all good candidates, 
but we don't know until we actually run it and we implement a strategy where we repeatedly find that best next word to see which one actually gives us the best results. So here's my code that says for the current list of guesses and the feedback that we got on those guesses, what is the next best possible guess by finding the word that most evenly divides the remaining possible options? And when we look at the data, we see a big improvement here, right? We've improved our average number of guesses by almost one. So this is a big improvement to our solution, but we still need to do something better. If we wanna be able to consistently solve these problems, we're gonna to need to do something further than what we've already done. But I do actually have one more trick up my sleeve here that I think is gonna help us to optimize our solution significantly more. Being the programmer that I am, I wanted to understand how the Wordle code actually works here. So I downloaded the entire JavaScript for Wordle. And what I found was something interesting. I found that there are actually two lists of words in here. And this first list is a list of about 2,000 some words. And what I realized was that this first list is the entire list of solutions. Whereas this second list is basically all other words that are valid words that are not potential solutions. So let's try this. We'll limit our words to only valid possible solutions and see how that affects our results. Now we're getting data that actually looks really good. So in this case, our average guess is around three and a half. Again, this is two down from our original test that we tried where it was an average of five and a half. And it's still one better than our previous where we used all the possible words. So if we consider layers as a starting word, there are going to be eight words that it's not able to solve in six guesses or less using this strategy. But honestly, out of 2,500 words, I'm pretty happy with that result. Now, if we wanted to optimize for the number of guesses, tears might be better, right? Because it actually has a lower average, but there is one more word that we are not gonna be able to solve in six guesses. So that's a trade-off that we have to make. So I think we have a pretty solid solution here that I'm really excited about. Is this a perfect solution? No, but what we did was take iterative steps, just like you would do in a coding interview, to optimize our solution, get to a better and better approach, and ultimately get to the point where we can pretty successfully solve this puzzle. So I'd encourage you, play around with this. Find something that's exciting to you, find a way to make your interview prep really fun, and that's gonna completely change the game for you. And it's gonna make it so much easier for you to ultimately be successful in your career, land that job that you're excited about, and ultimately get to work on those rewarding projects. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want more, go check out this next video on the top eight algorithms that you need to know for your coding interviews. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.